Hi everyone, welcome to the studio. So today I want to talk about the process of automatic drawing and uh, what that's going to mean for us at this point. Um, we'll come back and explore this several times over the semester. Um, so I'll lay, lay a couple of drawings out here. Um, automatic drawing of, uh, in, in this uh, introduction uh, has multiple layers of purpose. The first one that uh, I want to talk about and, and ex to use this for is to explore the, the drawing media that we'll be using over this semester. So um, we want to play with the media, and that means literally what it is. We're going to explore this media. We want to play with it. Um, this is kind of like um, test driving a new car. Uh, you take it on a, a little test drive and, and see how it does and performs before you take it on a a road trip or, a, or you know, some sort of uh, meaningful excursion. Um, so you just, we're just going to see what this media does. Um, other reasons for using the technique of automatic drawing is that um, it has the ability to loosen up your mind and drawing process and hand and body and imagination when you find yourself feeling too tight or restrictive or having artist block. So this is a free-flowing opening up of uh, uh, intention. And um, because of that, um, it, is, it is useful for instigating or, or uh, prompting the imagination. The surrealist artist movement really, really... Um, adopted and, and loved this technique because it opens up possibilities of finding new forms and compositions that you wouldn't have found before. Um, there are an, uh, similar processes in writing, automatic writing. Uh, sometimes writers will write with their left hand instead of their right and just, just let the words come out in order to find a story that um, isn't so much on the surface of their imagination. Um, there is a, uh, a saying, a Buddhist saying, a saying by the Buddha, that the mind um, is like a guitar or a sitar, I think, in their analogy. If you tune it and you tune the string too tight, it'll break. If it's not tight enough, then you can't play it. So there are times over the semester when we get into some really technical stuff like light and shadow and the physics of light and perspective where we're going to be wound up pretty tight. And then we wanna come back to an exercise like this to loosen things up and, and to let our imaginations flow again. So we'll move back and forth between those two. Um, other analogies uh, are jazz. Jazz music is a lot like automatic drawing. Um, so let's talk a, a little bit about materials. Here is the, uh, the drawing set. That, um, that we've got to work with right now. And so these are um, graphite pencils. And what I've done, let's see if we can get the focus to focus in on that. See how I've sharpened that? I've used a, a razor blade and X-Acto knife to sharpen that. And uh, when I do my drawing demo, I'll, I'll show you why. It's a superior to just using the, the sharpener. Although these will work, these are, these are decent, they'll work. Um, uh, these, I'm gonna, if you pull from here, you can get them out. This is um, graphite. They have, it's the same material that is in the drawing, pencils, graphite, um, and they're the same number designation in hardness. Um, so uh, they go from super soft to super hard. Uh, but with these, you can draw big uh, swaths with edges and stuff. So uh, same material for those people who like graphite drawing. Um, these are what they are calling in the drawing kit, they are calling these color sticks. You can see there's some earth tones here and some grays, uh, some that are a little bit more cooler and warmer. Um, these are also known as Conte crayons, but I, they may be wrestling with copyright issues using that term. Um, but they are a clay-based material, a clay-based drawing material used way back in, into the Renaissance. A lot of 
Da Vinci and Michelangelo's, those masterworks were done with this. Um, that's quite a beautiful, very subtle earth tone um, uh, media to draw with. Of course, you have an eraser. That's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this is a sanding pad, sandpaper pad. So you take this little bit off there and you're, you have some maybe, I don't know, 220 grit sandpaper here. And what that's good for is if you, if you need to sharpen your pencil, just the very tip of it, you can hone that tip. If you got some super tiny detail work to do, and there, there you go. There's a really sharp tip on that now. Anyway, that's what that's for. One of those will last you all kinds of years. Um, this is a blending stump. Um, and uh, you can see it's been used there. The, instead of using your finger to blend, my finger has oils in it. And it's very, uh, it's like a blunt instrument, right? compared to that. So here I can blend very tiny details. I'll demonstrate that in a minute. This is what's called a kneadable eraser. And so um, I can, un it's like an unboxing video. And unwrap this. And this eraser stretches like silly putty, which is really uh, convenient. Um, I can shape the tip of this so that I can erase or smudge or drag, um, create lights in dark areas, little tiny areas, or I can use it like a, like a brush. Anyway, it's a very versatile erasing tool or lightening tool if you need to lighten stuff up. Um, and of course we have uh, vine charcoal. I want to talk about a few more drawing supplies. If you have, when you have uh, a little bit of extra money or the ability to get them, um, they make um, all kinds of these sorts of, of holders. Let me move this so it's easier to see. Aha. Uh, so that I can uh, use that to uh, insert drawing pencils. And this is especially convenient when my drawing pencils get really, really, really short. Or uh, this is a different brand here. Uh, if I am uh, drawing big drawings and I need to stand far away like that to draw them, I need to get a couple of feet away. Um, this one works like this. You can just insert that, that charcoal in there and and uh, that little thing slides up right there we go and then holds that in place and then I can draw with it um, so that's super fun um, let's see. Uh, this bladed tool this little cutter is uh, I think superior to exacto knives I always lose the tops of my exacto knives this I can slide in and out sharpen things up and when this gets dull. Um, let's see if we can focus in on that. This, t this tip will break off and have a new tip right here. So it's actually much more economical additionally. Um, and uh, finally, this is the last one I'll go over right now. This is called a woodless pencil. And this woodless pencil is in another kind of uh, pencil holder device. And this one loosens like that. So here is a woodless graphite pencil, a 4B. And so this whole thing is graphite. And so I can not only draw with the tip, I can draw with the side of that and make uh, wider marks. Um, so that's a little bit about the media. For this assignment, I would like for you to uh, create three or more automatic drawings that uh, are, this is uh, 14 by 17 uh, paper here. Um, I prefer to put my paper like this instead of in a pad on a, on a drawing board. Um, so three 14 by 17 inch drawings. The first one using graphite, whether that is your range of hardness pencils and the graphite chunks, or you've got woodless pencils. So it's all graphite 
Drawing number two would be the, um, the color sticks, so the Conte, so you're getting a little bit of warm and cool and some earth tones in there, plus the white charcoal pencil, which is that's one thing that I forgot to mention. Um, the uh, drawing set comes with charcoal pencils, and I haven't sharpened these yet because I have others that um, I'm using uh, that I had for a while. And they also come with a, um, a black and a white pastel pencil. So uh, use the color sticks with a black and white pastel pencil um, to create some color. And here's an example of what that might end up looking like. So you can see the color on there. Um, and the third one, uh, just with the charcoal, with the vine and willow charcoal, plus the black and white pastel. So you're getting values in there. Um, I would like for you to spend about 30 minutes on each of these. And that gets you um, halfway into your, your three hours of drawing. Now with the other hour and a half or so of drawing time, you could choose to develop one of these drawings into a finished drawing. I'll talk about that in a second. Or if you have other media that you wanna play with in this automatic drawing technique, like watercolor or uh, colored pencil or uh, pastels or something like that, anything, then um, do several more automatic drawings. Or if you just get into this and you wanna do a bunch of graphite automatic drawings, that's fine too. Um, but uh, the, the Surrealists would use this technique in a way that um, if, you, if you look at this uh, graphite drawing here, um, it, you can see, I, my imagination as I began to draw this, um, I began to see a face right here, right? And so I could, uh, and, and here maybe is a, uh, a planet um, and the line of a horizon, maybe a sideways door. Or if I turn it this way, these became like giant skulls sitting out on a desert landscape with some sort of um, fantasy surrealist moon. So I could take this, take your drawing and, and turn them and see what your imagination does with them. And you could, you could take and spend a, a, you know, a bit of time developing these into uh, very finished, playful drawings. Uh, with this one, this is a similar color scheme to what the artists were using on the cave walls. They were using Conte and uh, earth tones and charcoal. And this began to remind me of uh, a bull or some sort of, you know, got the legs here and this big sweeping neck that might turn into like a bird or something. I don't know. But if I were going to play in a surrealist technique, I might develop that drawing that way. It's up to you. I want to give you some time to uh, utilize this technique to um, explore how, how it's useful for you. Um, but for the next couple of minutes, I want to just play around. I'm, I'm going to play around with this woodless pencil and demonstrate this really quickly for you. Um, everybody's body is going to make different kinds of marks. There is no right or wrong way to do this. It's simply just setting your, um, your media down onto the paper, beginning to make a mark, in this case, I'm gonna begin just to watch this happen. For now, I'm feeling this really curvilinear flowing mark and then letting the marks relate to the marks and maybe, maybe they go this way. The surrealist Paul Clay used to say he was taking a line for a walk and this walk has no particular destination. It just begins to respond to itself. Maybe things happen like that. Maybe I begin to slowly scribble. Some of, uh, some of your bodies, maybe, maybe you are the type of a person who likes to 
lay scribbles down, maybe more jagged marks or looping. There's no wrong answer here. I'm just seeing what this media can do and then letting my imagination begin to flow with it. Experiment with grips. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna leave it at that. I have a longer one that I've already done with this color one that I will um, attach to this video if you uh, wanna take a look at that whole process. I'll put it on very fast speed up. But the important thing is to be patient um, and to let the drawing develop. Um, and don't, don't be afraid, uh, one last thing, to come in with an eraser um, and smudge things and maybe uh, draw with this tool as well. Layer on some of that and then come back in with more marks like this. Okay. The last thing I will say is that it's pretty important to, um, if you're gonna listen to music, um, that it's not music that is going to be distracting. Um, if you have music with words in it, those words are going to shift you back into your analytical brain. And they'll, uh, it's a different track than this is. This is a non-analytical brain. So put on some music without words, put yourself into a, an environment where you're not being distracted by other people or whatever, your pets or news or whatever, turn all that off and um, let yourself just uh, get into this flow and see what happens. See what happens. You never know what you're gonna find when you uh, play around with this. Enjoy and have fun.